Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Santi Villegas and today we will make a quick overview of Figma's interface to get you started in no time. Okay, so let's get started with the dashboard. The first thing you will see once you log in into Figma. So in Figma, you will be able to log in into multiple accounts. So from this drop down menu, you will be able to access all the currently logged in accounts you have. And also you can access the community either through this drop down menu or from this top button in here. In the community section of Figma, you will be able to find assets, templates, inspiration, promoter designers, and all sort of stuff that will come very handy in the future and also you can mark files as favorite using this star icon and they will appear in the favorites file panel okay and finally the team section basically you can be part of several teams so you can access them through this panel and each one of those teams will have its dedicated space if you hold the shift key it will let you move things in straight lines and angles this also works as a selection tool so you might want to select several things you can do that with the move tool okay also in that drop down menu we have the scale tool which basically lets you scale elements with a given number so currently its original size will be 1x but if i type 2 then it would scale it 2x uh, and it lets you pick the the pivot point uh, from which it will start scaling so if i pick the top left corner and i type 2x you will see the element will grow in this direction okay next we have this drop down menu starting with the frame tool you can also access that through the f shortcut so if you click on that you have the option to either pick a predefined frame size in this section so if i click on desktop it will create a desktop sized uh, frame or while having the frame tool selected you can also click and release to any custom size you want okay so next we have the section tool so basically this tool is mostly used for organization generally speaking the section will be the outermost organizing hierarchy in the outer part you will have the section inside the section you might have a frame and inside a frame you might have the different elements of your composition and again this is generally speaking but the section tool is mostly used for organization and to put things inside of it and label it as you might want finally the slice tool works mostly like a screenshot so you will click drag and release and it will let you export a particular section it will specify that the what you will be exporting is the slice and not a complete section okay so next we have the shape tools inside here you will find grouped all the shapes you can create inside figma and everything is obviously vector based inside each one of those particular shapes you will find different ways of editing them so let's get started the first one is the rectangle inside the rectangle you will find these border radius icons which you can drag to edit the radius of this shape next you will find the line element in this one you can edit the, the weight of the stroke, the color of the stroke. If the stroke grows in the center, from the center, in the inside or in the outside of the shape. And you can also edit how each end of the line will look. So if you want a line arrow and in the other side a circle. Okay, next we have the arrow element. It's very similar to the line one, but it's predefined with one of it ends being already selected as an arrow. Okay, next we have the ellipse. If you hold shift, it will make it proportional. And if you hold command, it will grow from the center. In the ellipse, you can make it an arc. So you can basically create a pie chart with this or any sort of element that you need. Once you move that around, you will see your other handles appearing. So the first one will be the start of the of the pie so you can move this around and the next handle that appears is on the center if you move that it will let you turn this into a ring okay next is the polygon tool you can drag this same if you hold the shift element it will make it proportional if you hover over the shape you will see this handle appearing the first one being the radius control and the next one being how many corners it has so you can drag this and you can increase or decrease the amount of sides this polygon will have Okay, moving to the star tool, you can create stars, you can also edit the radius, you can edit how pointy or fluffy it is, and you can also edit how many sides it has. Okay, and finally, the place imager video tool, if you click that, it will open a window in which you select the media you will like to place in the file. Next, we have the pen and pencil tools, the first one being a more precise tool, so you will be able to create custom 
shapes that maybe are not included in the pre-made shapes if you hold the shift button it would create them in straight angles you are probably already familiar with this tool if you've worked with any vector based software you will notice while creating these shapes if i get near to the to the other end of the shape to another open end a dot will appear next to my pen tool meaning the shape will be closed so if i click there the i will no longer be editing it and it will create a closed shape if i create a straight line with the pen tool and i click the v shortcut for the move tool so that basically uh, stops editing this shape and then the top menu will change and you will get some other options basically the one you will be using the most if you are inside this sub menu will be the bend tool which will let you convert a straight line into a curve and it will create these extra handles which you can further edit the shape and the pencil tool is more of a free drawing tool you can also edit the the weight of the stroke and you can freely draw with this tool next we have the text tool if you have that tool selected you can either click and start typing or you can drag and release to create a text box type and it will follow the shape you created when you have any text selected you will see the text panel appearing on the right in here you can basically edit the font family the fonts weight the fonts size the line height the letter spacing uh, so if you created this box you can also select auto height so it will basically stick to the content of the box instead of the predefined shape and if you click auto width it will make every paragraph occupy a single line you can also in here edit your text alignment and also where that text is is aligned i mean you can either align the text itself but also inside of the element containing it so you can align it at the top in the middle or at the bottom and finally from the fill panel you will be able to edit the color of the text okay and next we have the resources tool in here we will find the components plugins and widget tools this is a bit more advanced so i will not include this in the general overview of figma next we have the hand tool this will let you move around your board we don't have any other tool selected for example the move tool you just hold the space key and you will be able to access the hand tool or just move around and finally the comments tool will let you collaborate very easily with your team because uh, you might want to tag someone in a particular comment there's nobody invited into this file but if you type the add symbol then you will get a list of all the members you can just select anyone you can just type any comment you want and they will get a notification telling them you just commented on this which they can answer okay and next we have this center top panel first option will be edit object which will let you access again the vector editing menu so it will become an editable shape and i can move things around when you finish the editing you can click done and we will close the the shape again i'm gonna just demonstrate a preview of what components are but i don't want to get into that since it's a bit more of an advanced concept but just to show you guys quickly you can turn any shape or any element into a component which will basically add it into a library of elements you can then reuse so let me show you the logic behind that if i turn this square shape into a component it then gets added into my library and i can clone that element holding command as many times as i want so basically if you have a repeating element sort of like a button in an interface you will make that button a component and then you can reuse it all across the interface but if you make any edit to this original component say turn the color into red or blue all of the child elements will replicate the changes made on the original component and if you want something to stop being a child element of a component you right click it and detach instance and you will see if i change this color back to the original the one that still is our child will change but this one is already detached so it won't and finally we have the mask element so if you have a photography or a picture you just place that on top you select both elements and you click on the mask and you will have created a mask for that photography you will notice if you have more than one shape selected this extra option will appear with which basically works like the like illustrator's pathfinder it will let you create several boolean functions so so you can union subtract intersect or exclude okay if you want to share or create a link for this file you will click in the top right share button and it will open this pop-up which you can manage 
permissions so anyone in this files in this file you can make them the owner or you can allow them only to view or to edit you can also manage if anyone with the link will be able to access or only the people specifically invited to the file you can also create a link it is automatically copied to your clipboard and you can create an embed for the file and you will also be able to publish this file inside the Figma community I showed you earlier. Okay, next we have the left panel which contains the layers, assets and pages. These are the layers tab, you will have pages, you can create multiple pages. Everything you are viewing in here is inside the interface overview page I created for this tutorial. If I create another one, you will stop seeing the first one, but you can always go back again. In the assets tab, you will be able to access all the components you have created and any library you are currently using for this file. This is just a quick way of accessing the pages. Okay, so let's continue with the right panel. Uh, let's go deeper into the options you will be able to use in there. So first, there's the align buttons. You can align it any side of the of the container you have or the center um, you can also edit the position manually like a specific value the 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 x axis for example uh, let's leave it in there you can also edit its width either by typing in a new value or by just putting the cursor on in on top of the letter and dragging you can also toggle on or off the constraint proportion so if i toggle it off I can edit this without it being um, locked to the height proportion. I can also edit its angle. And this is also the, the option you saw with the handles for the radius border. You can also edit from here. You can also edit the, the opacity of the element and the, the filter. Most of them you won't be able to see because there's nothing behind it. Once again, the fill. You can use both a solid fill or you can apply a linear radial angular diamond or you can fill this with an image and you can also apply stroke effects so you can also have the same solid or the other type of fills you have for the for the sorry the other type of effects you have for the fill you can also apply to the stroke so you can make this stroke bigger and you can pick any color you want you can also make the the strokes um you can have it just being at the top or the bottom or you can make it custom so you have for example a one one pixel stroke at the left a one pixel stroke at the right and both top and bottom let's make two in the effects section you can apply a couple of different effects inner shadows layer blurs or background blur let's go let me show you the drop shadow which is probably the one you're gonna use the most you you can edit the the position of the shadow in the x axis in the y axis then how blurred it is the spread for example you can edit what color you want the shadow to be the opacity of it okay and finally in the export section you can export either elements or complete frames to several formats such as png jpg uh, SVG and PDF. I just want to quickly show you I have this button and then I'm gonna create an active state of that button So let's give that a darker shade and a drop shadow. Okay, so then to connect this to as a prototype We're gonna click on the prototype tab when you hover over any element You're gonna have this plus button next to it only in this prototype mode active and you're gonna connect that button to this frame and then you're gonna have to select what's the trigger on that so you're gonna get this interaction details panel and you're gonna be able to select is the trigger a, a click a drag while hovering while pressing then you're gonna be able to specify the animation and also you're gonna see that the starting frame of the prototype is gonna have the play button so if you click on that you're gonna enter the prototype viewing mode and you're gonna have this animation that you already set up so when i click it I'm gonna be taken into the next frame if you click on any element within the inspect tab you're gonna see uh, these different panels up here so you're gonna see a very detailed explanation of these elements of its properties colors interaction and you will be able to see the CSS code iOS or Android code yeah and this is basically what makes Figma a great bridge between design and, and development uh, is that anything you create in here it's given a very clean code so it's very it's very easy for developers to grab your designs from here okay and that's it that's a very quick overview of figma's interface just to get you started and don't forget to subscribe and like